December 19th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Proverbs chapter 19 from the Old Testament. Better is a poor person who walks in his integrity than one who is perverse in his speech and is a fool. It is dangerous to have zeal without knowledge, and the one who acts hastily makes poor choices. A person's folly subverts his way, and his heart rages against the Lord. Wealth adds many friends, but a poor person is separated from his friend. A false witness will not go unpunished, and the one who spouts out lies will not escape punishment. Many people entreat the favor of a generous person, and everyone is a friend of the person who gives gifts. All the relatives of a poor person hate him. How much more do his friends avoid him? He pursues them with words, but they do not respond. The one who acquires wisdom loves himself. The one who preserves understanding will prosper. A false witness will not go unpunished, and the one who spouts out lies will perish. Luxury is not appropriate for a fool. How much less for a servant to rule over princes. A person's wisdom makes him slow to anger, and it is his glory to overlook an offense. A king's wrath is like the roar of a lion, but his favor is like dew on the grass. A foolish child is the ruin of his father. A contentious wife is like a constant dripping. A house and wealth are inherited from parents, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. Laziness brings on a deep sleep, and the idle person will go hungry. The one who obeys commandments guards his life. The one who despises his ways will die. The one who is gracious to the poor lends to the Lord, and the Lord will repay him for his good deed. Discipline your child, for there is hope, but do not set your heart on causing his death. A person with great anger bears the penalty, but if you deliver him from it once, you will have to do it again. Listen to advice and receive discipline, that you may become wise by the end of your life. There are many plans in a person's mind, but it is the counsel of the Lord which will stand. What is desirable for a person is to show loyal love, and a poor person is better than a liar. Fearing the Lord leads to life, and one who does so will live satisfied. He will not be afflicted by calamity. The sluggard plunges his hand in the dish, and he will not even bring it back to his mouth. Flog a scorner, and as a result, the simpleton will learn prudence. Correct a discerning person, and as a result, he will understand knowledge. The one who robs his father and chases away his mother is a son who brings shame and disgrace. If you stop listening to instruction, my child, you will stray from the words of knowledge. A crooked witness scorns justice, and the mouth of the wicked devours iniquity. Judgments are prepared for scorners and floggings for the backs of fools. God, Proverbs 19 shares a lot about how to live a good life, things that you should do, say, things to have in your life in a certain way, um, like listening to instructions. It talks a lot about the wisdom uh, and understanding of knowledge, of being kind to the poor, to the people that don't have have things such as a roof over the head, food, and uh, in this case, even friendship also talks about how to be involved in your child's life, how to discipline them, uh, and we're kind of missing the boat on that in this current time where parents unfortunately want to be friends with their kids rather than, than parents. And you as our father discipline us out of love. Uh, and it's it seems to be getting harder and harder for parents to to do the same or to want to do the same but you refer to that as part of that good life you also talk about uh, avoiding people avoiding relationships with people who can't or don't have any self-control and this one's really interesting because I'm actually now around a lot of people who don't have self-control uh, I get to be in discipleship relationships with them and, and help them grow 
but I guarantee that there was a time in my life where those people would have pulled me under. I would have headed back into my life of sin, um, debauchery, all sorts of trouble that I could find. Uh, so I completely understand that if, if I'm not relying on the strength of you, uh, I can easily fall back into temptation in those situations. Also part of this good life is acknowledging the rules that you have for us. Um, not living under the law like the Old Testament, but the guidelines that you've set up for us, very similar to discipline, uh, completely out of love, and that we also fear you. Uh, and a lot of people get this part wrong of understanding fear. It's not shaking in your boots. It's more in awe of your power, your sacrifice of your son, your endless love for us to just truly be humbled by your power God and then we are to understand that to have a good life that that love has to be part of it and that's pretty prevalent throughout the whole Bible uh, we start to see uh, comments about our significant other as far as a wife goes uh, talking about a prudent wife, one who can keep a household and run it efficiently, uh, would come from the Lord. But one who is contentious is like constant dripping. And it's not only that kind of nagging feeling of, of a wife who doesn't have the same plan or the same vision or same goal as her husband. It's not just that kind of nagging feeling from constant dripping. The constant dripping in a house, and I should know because the house I live in is from 1937. Uh, if you have a constant drip in your house, it actually causes structural damage. And so if this behavior doesn't change in the household, if there isn't the structure that you've set up for a marriage, God, uh, it can completely erode the entire structure of that marriage. So a lot of the things... Uh, and not just in Proverbs 19, but a lot of a lot of other places in Proverbs as well as throughout the Bible, speak volumes about what we need to have to have a good life. Things we need to do, things we don't need to do. But ultimately, not only for our good life, but a life that we should live to glorify you with. Thank you for giving us these guidelines, these rules, uh, this discipline to follow, not only in our own lives, but in the relationships with friends, family, people we work with, our children, our husbands, our wives. The fact that you would give us a book that, that outlines all of these amazing, powerful truths speaks volumes to the love that you have for us. I pray all this in your son's name. Amen.